Hello everyone, you know what time it is, it's time to check out some exciting Blender tutorials and projects and resources and all sorts of stuff that's been going on in the community. This video is part of my Blender project series, otherwise known as the Community Roundup series, where I try and give you some homework to take a look at and just some stuff to try while you wait for future content. So first of all, we're going to check in with our lovely friend of the channel, Martin Kleckner, because he's been continuing with his Environment series. There's a new video on the CG Boost channel called Environments with Geometry Nodes in Blender Breakdown. So I'll show you the final result quickly. You can build this lovely grass scape with these scattered elements of rocks and or grass and clouds and how to get cloud shadows over an environment as well as import a city from Google Maps which you can see in the background there. This is all done within about 11 minutes 40 and this is a freely available tutorial on the CG Boost channel. As you may know Martin is responsible for one of the most comprehensive environment courses for Blender called Master 3D Environments in Blender, very appropriately named. I'll leave my affiliate link below if you want to check that out as well. But let's take a look in a bit more detail of what you can learn in this video. Alright so first of all we have terrain displacement with geometry nodes and one thing I like about CG Booster videos is you get these nice annotations which appear on the screen. Just little subtle details which I like. They put more effort into their videos than I do. Then they show you some scattering techniques so how to scatter like vegetation and ground details using geometry nodes. Scattering things is like one of the most obvious use cases for geometry nodes anyway but he shows you how to like layer up these different effects and use them together and the results are quite realistic as well so I like that. Then they show you a really interesting technique which I had never really thought about trying before and it's using a plane to get a sky background but also animating it using shape keys to give the illusion of parallax. So basically to have it slightly move with the camera. I really like that technique. Then they explain how they made the background hills using the world creator software which is fantastic for getting like these realistic displacement maps for terrains. You can use it to calculate like erosion and other stuff like that. Then they show you this cool add-on called Shakeify by Ian Huber and Nathan Vegdal. As usual I'm going to get so many names wrong in this video but it's a free add-on and it basically helps you to get these kind of realistic camera shake effects. So if you don't like animating cameras yourself then that's going to be like a super useful add-on for you to have. Then they show you how to use vertex groups to limit the placement of trees around the environment so you can get like a more handcrafted and also kind of more realistic distribution of vegetation around your environment. Then they're going to explain the process of importing content from Google Maps into your blend scene. So there are a few different links you'll need to take a look at but they'll explain it all perfectly for you because obviously you can't do this strictly with just Blender but it's super handy and also oh yay Canary Wharf London represent. <laughs> But I think this is probably the most um, complex part of the tutorial but you know being able to bring anything in from Google Maps gives you just an extreme amount of artistic power so I recommend checking that out. Then also here's an interesting technique for basically using generated noise textures to simulate cloud shadowing across your environment. It's a really effective technique and then they go through some extra details of lighting your scene using HDRIs and spotlights to kind of highlight certain elements of the terrain and then finally they add just a little bit of atmospherics with some very faint volumes. So as you can tell there's a lot of information crammed into this video so I always keep an eye on them and that's one thing I love about this community is that when I see other creators making tutorial content like this I've never ever ever seen this as like a competitive thing where we're like trying to like one-up each other I always think about it like I imagine that these creators are my clones and they're just going off and they're learning their own things and creating this educational content and creating tools for us all to use sounds a bit weird like uh, I bet a few creators are gonna get a bit freaked out by that but you think we're your clones kind of it's like what I mean is we're all like a team working together and developing techniques to help everyone else make artwork more effectively. I like seeing it that way. Anyway, Martin has been employing these techniques on his own short film called Heroes of Bronze. It looks like it's going really well because here are a few like preview shots. It's looking really high quality. So yeah, very cool. You might be able to tell they're a huge fan of the ancient world. Next video I want to share with you, and the next name I want to absolutely butcher, comes from Sarah Dietschy. Dietschy? Dietschy? Dietschy. Correct me in the comments, it's become a meme at this point. But anyway, they made this lovely video, I learned Blender in 24 hours, in brackets, I'm tired. Uh, everyone would be. 24 hours is not a lot of time to cram in learning Blender, but it was a lovely video to watch and really interesting because it's not often that we get to visually see the process of someone learning Blender and it's something I think a lot of people can relate to. It's quite funny watching their process of like trying to find tutorials, but they did it in a way which I think is really, really good. Basically, the approach they took, and it's something that I would recommend to anyone, is to find something that you want to make. Find something that inspires you, something that gives you a bit of motivation, and then use it as a target for your learning. So in this case, they love these isometric kind of like diorama rooms, and they wanted to design their own one. I think that's a fantastic project because it's not too large scale. It can be as complex as you want to make it, but it also maintains some simplicity. It's quite an entertaining video. It's well edited as well. It is a sponsored one, but also Archiro, another friend of the channel, makes a bit of a cameo in the video. And I won't show you the final result because I want you to go and check it out. So give them a watch. I also tried to give them a little welcome here. 
welcome to the Blender community. So yeah, lovely, lovely stuff. Next up, we have a video from Inlight VFX. This is all about compositing. It's without exaggerating, one of the highest quality tutorials I have ever seen on YouTube. Ooh, big praise coming from Curtis. The creator of this channel is Jacob Holiday, and they know a hell of a lot of stuff about compositing. The point of this video is about getting accurate reflections when you're composing objects on top of footage. Now there's a lot more to it than you might expect, because it requires an understanding of different types of surfaces, how rough, how reflective they are, but also it requires being able to combine shadows with reflections. Now that might be a bit more complicated than you think it is, but in this video they're going to break it all down for you and provide you with just excellent demonstrations for different types of surfaces and an explanation of different methods of how to do it, how to get the different passes, how to combine them together, some extra notes about color grading and like getting the right type of lighting, and it's all just like so visually described. Jacob just like, I love his work, but he just makes me feel bad when I watch his videos because like there's so much effort that goes into them. Even the little intricate details about the videos, like the, the subtle change in music choice, like as he's, as he's explaining different things, it blows my mind. But I was lucky enough to get a bit of a preview for this video before it came out. And that's because I actually met up with Jacob in uh, London the other day. And while we were having a meal together, he showed me a preview of some of the render results and it looked great. Happy to see it. And I might make a little cameo in the video so that's another reason to give it a watch so thank you jacob you're doing a wonderful service for all the compositors out there okay so it's time for me to butcher the third name on our list there's a lovely blender project inspired by stranger things so if any of you've been watching stranger things season four recently you know exactly what this is by Aaron van der Weyenberg? Weyenberg? Maybe? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a Dutch name. I need to take lessons. I've got a Dutch moderator friend, so I'm sure they're going to give me like a right grilling when they see this. But anyway, Aaron, I, I love this project. It's so cool. Like the subtle details between the before and after version. I don't want to spoil anything. But like if you haven't watched Stranger Things, this new season is just, I think it's the best one they've done so far. It's fantastic. It's such a good source of inspiration, everything about it. But also this project specifically, I love the consistency of the art style. I love like the fact that it's an endless loop. I love the subtle motion blur. I love the little animated details for the little objects moving around. I love like the consistent roundness of certain shapes. It's just it's a really nicely composed and well put together scene. These little half cube corner dioramas seem to be really popular in the community at the moment. Maybe I should give one a try myself. Okay so next up I want to give a shout out to this channel Spectral Vectors. Now I know there are a lot of people out there that want more Python content for Blender. This is a six part well technically a seven part series because this episode zero as well, introducing you to the Blender Python API. Now I haven't watched the whole thing, I've basically gone back and forth with episode zero, three and six, kind of getting a vibe for how it's laid out. It seems more like conversational content rather than tutorials like mine, which are more kind of like highly trimmed down, but they provide a lot of links to other resources as well. I think they even reference my easy BPY module in episode zero. Although the one thing I will say is that episode six, bye bye Blender, hello GitHub and VS Code. I use VS Code or Visual Studio Code to do all of my add-on development. However, in this episode, they don't go through the Blender development extension by Jax Luke for VS Code, which is what I use because they said they had some issues with it for like recent versions of Blender. I have never had any issues with it. It might just be an individual use case and it's a very, very useful extension. So you might need to look into that a bit more yourself as well. But another reason I wanted to share this is that people resonate with different educators in different ways. And coding is one of those topics where it can be very hit or miss with like different educators. And I thought, well, for those of you out there who want to learn this and who haven't been able to resonate with my content or other educators, then I'm just going to throw in some other people into the mix. So if you want it, there's more content here. Next up, we're going to take a look at a few add-ons in the community, which you might find useful. These are things I have wanted to talk about, but I just haven't found the time to do it. So now is the time. First of all, from B Production, we have the Gobos Light Textures Package. So this is a collection of Gobos. And if you don't know what they are, they're like these shadowy effects for lighting. Like a Gobo traditionally is if you just take like a plane of something and you put it in front of a light to simulate a shadowing effect. So for example, it's used a lot for, if you look here, simulating light filtering through trees without necessarily having to calculate that manually. Here's a good demonstration here. Spotlight, Gobo, Shadow Projection. So this Blender Market Store page has a lot of good demonstrations here. This package is compatible with the Asset Browser, so you can drag and drop them into your scene. It's fully controllable as well, so you have lots of artistic control over the effect. And there are some animated ones as well. So you can see some demonstrations of that on the page. It works with volumetric lighting as well, which is lovely. So yes, if you want to check it out, then it's there. And you can see a categorical catalog. That's a great term. Of the content, they have animated leaves, caustic effects, forest-like stuff clouds, grid effects, windows, geometry and abstract effects, leaves, and then there's a lovely user gallery. So I think that's going to be a useful one for people. I've seen a lot of other people using this in the community and I will leave my affiliate link down below. 
So I want to take a moment to give a shout out to Machines Tools. They have something new coming in the future called Hypercursor, which is a new tool to kind of extend the functionality of the 3D cursor from what I've heard. Knowing how their tools work, there's going to be a lot of stuff to learn about it. Now, if you've been in the community for a while, you've probably heard of some of these tools. And again, just like the scatter out on, this is something that I've really wanted to do content for, but I just haven't found the time because there's so much to learn with these tools. OK, so first of all, Machine Tools, right? This one here is the first thing I install on any version of Blender. And that's not an exaggeration. I love their Pi menus. They have these fantastic alternative Pi menus compared to like the default version of Blender and you can enable and disable them as you like. So that's super useful. It does a lot of other stuff as well. And you can take a look at that here. Like they have these super advanced Pi menus. You can click on any one of these here. There's documentation for all of their add-ons. So you can take a look, pick and choose what you like. You can see a list of all the tools here, stuff that which I haven't even learned how to use properly. It is technically free on their GitHub, but there's a Deus Ex package where you can get some extra stuff, including their punch it manifold extrusion tool. But if you come on over over to decal machine if you're a hard surface modeler or if you're interested in anything hard surface like this one is like one of the essentials. So what it allows you to do is use these non-destructive mesh decals, which essentially lay over the top of a surface. And as you can see, as you rotate around it, it gives you this proper sense of depth and you can adjust those values as well. You can create your own even. But also this has trim sheet support as well as atlasing support. So not only does this work in Blender, but it can also be combined with game engine workflows as well. But I want to show you some of the storefront images here because on these demonstrations, you'll be able to see all kinds of decals used to add extra details to these objects. I think this is one of my favorites. So yeah, it's really cool. Like if you're into hard surface stuff, it's an essential one. But also another add-on of theirs I want to share is Mesh Machine. Now, again, this is something which I know is an absolute powerhouse because one complaint I've heard about Blender's development recently is that they haven't been really paying much attention to the fundamental modeling tools in Blender. We hear a lot of exciting features about like, you know, the higher level stuff or geometry nodes, new rendering techniques, but what about the actual modeling tools? There's been a bit of a void of features there, and that's where Mesh Machine comes in. At $40 and with over 11,000 sales, which is crazy, Mesh Machine provides you with a huge variety of operations, which to my understanding allow you to manipulate meshes which you might consider destructive in a non-destructive way. So let's take a look at the trailer to see what you can do. You can create fillets from chamfers and modify the width however you like. You can do washout fillets to add some extra smoothness and kind of extra rounded areas. When you have fillets already there, you can just click and modify them however you like. So that saves you a lot of time in kind of going back and then manually recreating them. You can create hard edges from chamfers which already exist. So that's great if you want to change your mind on having like any of these beveled areas. Notice it even works on these areas with complex curvature. So see here. And there we go, it's made it into a hard edge, all managed automatically. They have the UnF tool, which um, fixes, reconstructs, and then merges bevels on the vert and edge level. So see here how you can unmess up a uh, beveled area, which is super, super handy. You can now correctly flatten areas along edges. You can turn corners to redirect the flow of a chamfer. You can create a quad corner from any triangle corner, like so, and then redirect it. You can do Boolean cleanup on meshes which have been messed up by Boolean operations. See here how with the chamfer tool, when you're using it on mesh surfaces here, which have been messed up post Boolean operations, see how it automatically cleans up the geometry afterwards. Watch this. There you go. So basically, you don't need to worry too much about messed up geometry when you're doing these destructive Boolean workflows for hard surface modeling. So I've shown you a few cool things, but as you can see, we're only halfway through the video and there's a lot of other stuff for you to discover. They even have plugs. That's super fantastic as well. So yeah, it really takes the basic fundamental modeling tool set of Blender and then just like takes it to the next level. Gives you all these excellent modeling and cleanup tools, stuff which goes way beyond what's already there. So no wonder so many people have picked it up. I'll leave my affiliate link down below if you want to give it a try. OK, so another video I want to show you from Chris Bettini here we have making a stylized space shader in Blender. They recently passed 10,000 followers on Twitter, so they made this lovely effect as a celebration. As you can see, you can get these really cool kind of space stylized effects. I describe it as a stylized parallaxical nebulaic space shader. One of those words may have been made up, but interestingly, it uses the ray marching technique to get some of these internal volumetric looking styles. And that's something I've never really tried experimenting with. And I've seen a lot of people follow along with this tutorial and make their own cool results. But as you can see, you can get all kinds of like really cool parallax like styles as it's rotating around this object. But because it's in the shader nodes, it's all completely procedural as well. So you can modify the values however you like. It's a very, very cool stylized shader. Hello check it out here on all these different objects. So it works on any geometry you like. Very nice. I would probably have some good use for this in future projects. So I'm going to sit down and study this one a bit more. There's no voice for this tutorial as well. So it's just text on the screen, but it's still easy to follow along with and it's well explained. So thank you very much, Chris. Keep it up.
So you should know that recently I put out a new video about using Mid Journey to make AI artwork and combining that with Blender workflows, but obviously I'm not the only one that's done this. So Gleb Alexandrov did a video recently, AI art in seconds with Mid Journey, images from text. Now there are a lot of conversations still to be had about using AI tools, and I know that people get very heated about this subject. But one thing I like seeing is how other artists in the community still manage to get such different results using the same tools. So even though theoretically we're sitting on the same amount of power, I still find it really interesting and inspiring to see what Gleb can come up with. Now, yeah, before we get any strange comments about how AI is going to take over everything or how someone's going to stop watching because we're talking about AI tools, my opinions are still very mixed. There are still a lot of questions I want answered about the copyright side of things. I think there are a lot of great areas when talking about the data sets used to create these tools or when kind of asking it to create something in the style of another artist and even then using it to combine the styles from different artists like where is the line on copyright. Now these are questions which I'm very interested in exploring and I want to do more research about but I find it part of my responsibility to educate people on what's going on in this community, so that's what I've been doing with my video. Kind of highlighting the new tools on the scene, saying what you can or can't use it for, for your own artistic workflow. So yeah, and like I've said before, if you want a bit more discussion content, diving a bit deeper into some of the questions around this technology, then I put that kind of stuff up on my second channel. That's where we just sit and discuss things in a bit more of a casual way. Still edited, but not to the same degree as these kind of like hyper prepared videos for the main channel. But yeah, these AI tools are very addictive to play with, they're very fun, they're good sources of inspiration. So feel free to check out Gleb's video or my own video if you want to learn more about those tools. Now to close this up I want to tell you about 2Animate, so it's a new website here which over time will add new courses but so far they have a lovely Blender Basics course which teaches you how to use Blender for beginners but kind of from the perspective of animators. So this is a high quality course kind of in the similar vein to how CG Boost do their courses on their website. You can see the entire curriculum here which you can follow along with. It uses Teachable, the same platform as well so it's very easy to kind of track your progress as you work through it. It's $114 so it's a relatively high paid course but you know with that you get get free mentors here and you can take a look at their backgrounds so industrial light and magic you can games pipline studios and if you take a look at their website they will be coming out with a proper animation course in the future so if we take a look here they'll be coming in late 2022 so another reason i want to make you aware of this is because so far i've been recommending pierre's alive animation course which is absolutely fantastic but i've been recommending that a lot because there's not much animation educational content available in the community especially not high quality animation content so again just like i informed you about spectral vector producing more python content Content, I'm letting you know that 2Animate is producing some more animation content. So there's just new content available for people that want to try different educators, different content types to kind of pick up these skills. So if you're new to Blender and you want to learn it from the perspective of animators, then this Blender Basics course is probably made for you. I'll leave my affiliate link down below for this as well if you want to check it out. And just before we close this up, I want to show you a couple of other artists I've been inspired by recently. So first of all, we have Luix Lin, and I might have pronounced the username wrong, but I've really been enjoying their work recently. There's just like a lot of lovely stuff on here. Look at the cute little doggos. But yeah, like really nice stuff on my Instagram feed. So thank you very much. And then also I've been taking a look at Brian Sum on ArtStation. This is not strictly Blender related, but they have some really cool inspiration here for getting these semi-organic hard surface shapes. The line art is really, really cool on this. So I just really like their work. There's so much to check out here. I think a lot of other people will like it as well. Like really, really cool reference work here. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show. Make sure to do the subscribe thing, sign up to the patron for exclusive files and get your name put on this Hall of Patrons artwork. As for new patrons, we have Ian, Shinichiro, or Shinichiro, I'm not too sure. I already need lessons on how to pronounce names, and Dan. So thank you very much to all of you. I bestow upon you good health and good fortune for the patrons keep everything alive. So thanks everyone, have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. I nearly forgot the emoji for this video. So we do this thing on my channel where I tell you an emoji to put in the comments so I can see who made it this far. So the emoji for this video is going to be a bird. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone.